Good morning. I greet you this morning with Paul's greeting to the church in Corinth, which says, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We heartily welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to this regular Sunday worship service broadcast. The service comes to you from Pochestrum Methodist Church, and my name is Pastor Lo Geyser, and I'm a member of the ministry team here. It is indeed a privilege and a pleasure for us to serve you with a word this morning, and it is our prayer that you will be richly blessed by our worship together. Let's open in prayer. Father God, we gather here today under your care and protection, and thank you for this new day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for your loving kindness and grace that never fails us. We thank you for those joining us over the air, and that you would guide our thoughts and actions this morning to bring you glory. Strengthen us and fill us with your presence and with your joy. O Lord Jesus, you are worthy of all honor and praise. Help us to love as you do and to act wisely so that others can be drawn to your salvation and hope. May we build each other up and encourage each other every day as we give you all the glory. O Holy Spirit, we welcome you here in our midst. Fill us now to do your good work in our world and to contribute to the building of God's kingdom. And we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. And as we bring our thanks, we also bring to you the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray, as we, your disciples today, also pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our hymn this morning is Hymn 516 in the Methodist Hymnal, that beautiful hymn, Trust and Obey. And it was written by John Henry Samus in 1919. And Samus was born in 1846 in Brooklyn, New York, and was a businessman who became a Presbyterian minister. He taught at the Bible Institute of Los Angeles. Samus wrote over a hundred hymns, and most of them could be categorized as songs of trust and songs of obedience. So let's listen to the words. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but His smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt, nor a fear, nor a sigh, nor a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil He doth richly repay. Not a grief, nor a loss, not a frown, nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of His love until all on the altar we lay, for the favour He shows and the joy He bestows are for them who trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. We listen to the music.
Our scripture readings this morning come from both the Old and the New Testaments. And our Old Testament reading comes from Proverbs 3, verse 1 to 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. And that is also our key verse. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil and it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Our New Testament scripture comes from Philippians 4, verse 4 to 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. And do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses, surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think or meditate about these things. May the Lord bless the reading of his word and engrave it on the tablets of our hearts. I've entitled what I'd like to share with you this morning Burn Out, Trust and God's Peace. Burn Out, Trust and God's Peace. The new normal caused by COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent different lockdowns has created a radical change in every area of our lives. And change generally is not easily accepted, and the forced changes, as with the pandemic, brought about many stresses with many serious and negative consequences. Now in the 1970s, a syndrome called the Burnout Syndrome, at that time already had similar emotional and physical effects as COVID-19. Although having seemingly faded away, it has now again become a prominent topic of discussion amongst professionals. A medical journal describes burnout as follows. Burnout is a state of emotional, physical and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged skills. It causes one to feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained and unable to meet constant demands. It saps one's energy, leaving one feeling increasingly helpless, hopeless, cynical, resentful, and even fearful. And it spills over, eventually, into every area of life, including our homes, work, and social life, and can also cause long-term changes to the body that makes one vulnerable to illnesses like colds, and flu. I recently listened to a panel discussion of a survey by the South African Depression and Anxiety Group or SADAG on the effects of the new normal on society and all sorts of remedies were suggested to overcome these effects but none of them indicated that they could instate lasting true peace and joy within us. And while I was listening to this, I wondered how God would want us, his children, to deal with such situations. And as usual, I found the answer very clearly in the Word of God, and well in one of my daily readings covering Proverbs 3 that day. So guided by our readings this morning, I briefly would like us to look at what these verses teach us about, first of all, trusting in God, and then acquiring, secondly, God's peace. And thirdly, how 
this could assist us in avoiding or not getting into a state of burnout. Now the first point, trusting in God's plans. Now this trusting is defined in various ways, relying on, leaning on, believing in, etc. And our key scripture in Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. That's the Amplified Bible. Now our culture tells us that no one should tell us what or what not to do. We must lean on our own understanding. Worldly principles and methods should be applied for the solution to our needs, whether positive or negative. And as humans we tend to look for many ways of coping with the dangers of the unknown by leaning on our own strength, understanding and abilities. But the unfailing Word of God tells us not to lean on our own understanding and abilities, but to trust in God. And we have the ultimate example in the Bible of leaning on and trusting in the Father God in Jesus Christ Himself. And it has been estimated that over one-tenth of Jesus' recorded New Testament words were taken from the Old Testament. In the four Gospels, 180 out of the 1800 verses that report his discourses are either Old Testament quotes or allude to Old Testament scriptures. Tim Keller, a well-known theologian and author, said a very profound thing when he said, when Jesus Christ was tortured, he literally bled scripture because that was how much he trusted his Father. Jesus Christ, our Lord, immersed himself in the Word of God, and when we believe in and trust in Jesus, we also need to immerse ourselves in the Word of God to honor him. And the time has come for us to start trusting in God's plans for us, particularly in this current time of severe change. Proverbs 16 verse 9 tells us that we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. The Lord knows every detail of what lies ahead, and He only has good intentions for us in the midst of all our calamities. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 tells us that, For I know the plans and the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and well-being, and not for disaster, to give you a future and hope. So our task is less about knowing the outcome of our own plans and more about knowing God and His will for us. And we need to figure out what it means to walk with our Lord through the haze of all our circumstances and to practice knowing and embracing His presence in all difficult situations. And we can only do so by staying close to Him in fellowship by prayer and searching and scouring His Word for His truths and His promises. And it also means keeping in step with and depending on the Holy Spirit to guide us and to give us strength and wisdom to do so. Our second point this morning is God's peace. The Amplified Bible defines peace as harmony and unity with God and others, unperturbedness, and freedom from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts. Peace is something we all long for. Peace with God, peace with our families, and peace with those around us. And God promises a peace like the world cannot give. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, You, referring to God, will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all those whose thoughts are fixed on you. Now this term fixed is outlined quite well in Hebrews where the writer says, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. 
God loves people. So when we fix our mind on wanting to love God and to love and bless people, we are fixing our minds on the Lord. And in doing so, the word says, we will be at peace. That peace that goes beyond understanding, as Paul says in Philippians 4, 7. And one of the major issues that really robs us of our peace and joy is simply that we do not trust God. God will never let us down. If we believe in Him and trust in Him through Jesus Christ, His Son, and in the power of His Holy Spirit, we will never be ashamed. That is His promise to us. And we need to be encouraged in the fact that when our trust level in God goes up, so also do our peace and joy levels. And we need to let God live His life in and through us. Most people that burn out do so because they fix their minds on how to come, overcome troubles and burnout in their own strength and not placing their trust in God. And the more we look for answers in God's principles and His Word, and the more we get acquainted with Him, the more peace and contentment will come through Him to us. Now how do we get acquainted with the triune God? Psalm 105 verse 4 summarizes it so beautifully by saying, Seek, inquire of, and for the Lord, and crave Him and His strength. Seek and require His face and His presence continually evermore. When God gives peace, who can make trouble? Jesus gave that assurance when He said, Peace I give to you, and my peace I leave with you. I do not give as the world gives. My third point, and I conclude with this, is the central theme of the Bible is life. Life in Jesus and by the power and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. John 10 verse 10 tells us that Jesus came so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And life means vitality, energy, excitement, enthusiasm and peace and joy. And most of the time when burnout sets in it's because we tend to move at the pace of the culture around us which is far beyond what God intends for us to do. That is what creates anxiety, fear, tension and stress, all which lead to burnout. And when we become tired, our thoughts are tired, and that drains our energy. But energy comes back when we fix our minds and thoughts on the things of God. And that can only start happening when we fully believe in trust in, rely on and lean on Jesus Christ the Son. And we do so by surrendering our hearts to Him and believing wholly in what He did on the cross for us and in His resurrection. And in believing and trusting in Him our hearts are circumcised by the Holy Spirit and we become born again children of God. It is then that we will start experiencing that peace that goes beyond understanding that Paul speaks about in Philippians. It is then that we will have our paths made straight, as Proverbs 3, seven tells us. And it is then, as Proverbs 3, eight tells us, that it will be health to our bodies, our marrow, our nerves, our sinews, our muscles, our inner parts and refreshment to our bones. In other words, it will refresh our whole being. And may the Lord bless us with His everlasting peace as we put our trust fully in Him through Jesus Christ His Son and in the power of His Holy Spirit. Amen. A close in prayer. Father God, we thank You for Your Son Jesus Christ our Saviour the Prince of Peace. We thank you for being more powerful than any of our cares, anxious thoughts and troubles. We thank you for being our shield and the one we can trust with all that we have and are. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we wake up each morning, you will fill us with your abundant peace and joy and give us the courage through your Holy Spirit to face every obstacle and 
to proclaim your name with boldness. We surrender now our lives over to you. And in Jesus' name we pray this.